Well, that didn't work out so well, none did it. <laughs> the people in Castletown were commenting earlier that the spirit tracks were disappearing, and on our way to the Tower of Spirits at the end of the last video, the remaining spirit tracks disappeared. Ink. No more train for us. Chancellor Cole was also revealed to be a jerk, which is honestly not much of a surprise. And the princess got zapped and kidnapped. Oh no. All part of the job, I guess, being a princess and all. These things are expected to happen. You can speak with teacher here to get the lowdown on what's up, although I suppose that would leave us at about a medium height anyway, so I'm not really sure that's progressing at all. It's a rather humorous exchange, and you are required to speak with teacher here. Uh, if you just try and walk away, then he'll yell at you and tell you to come back, and tell you speak with him and tell him what's going on. Uh, but after that, you can speak with the other people, too, to get some other um, oddball information that doesn't really matter, but it's just kind of as of the story. So you can chat with other people if you want the other guards along the way, although it's not required to talk to them. Anyways, to move on, you want to go to the throne room, and that will continue on with the story.
Alrighty, so Zelda is now a ghost, not having a good day. Now, because Cole was trying to keep her from going to the Tower of Spirits earlier, it's probably smart to try and go there ourselves, um, take her there so that we can figure out what's going on. I mean, what was he trying to hide? Uh, but now we have to walk since we can't take the train anymore, so that's unfortunate. We want to head south and go speak with the guard to get the directions to the back doorway, which leads to the Tower of Spirits. You want to go through the left door and then down the stairs and speak with the guard here in front of the door, and he'll say that he won't let you through until you have a sword. Hello, Mito. <laughs> now Zelda says that we should go speak with the guard captain, but along the way there are several chests and a bunch of rupees we can gather. There are so many antagonistic jaws along our journey. These menacing pieces of pottery must be destroyed. <laughs> I actually recommend this because occasionally they do drop blue rupees and sometimes even common treasure. So early on that's pretty sweet and you should definitely snag as many as possible. This chest here near the exit contains a red rupee so be sure to grab that. Go back up the stairs and then go left and destroy the jars here if you wish. One way to make this a little faster is to actually toss the jars at each other rather than tossing them one at a time on the floor. This will actually break two at a time and to the far west there is a little path that leads outside to a balcony out here that has a chest containing a common treasure. Back inside, you want to go to the far south, and we have yet another chest containing 20 rupees. Our goal is 80, so we're almost there. You want to go outside and then go downstairs on either the left or the right. If you take the left side, there are some more jars right here. So if you are very jar happy, this would be a wonderful direction for you to go. Now, this little area just before the throne room, there are three jars on either side next to the water, and the bottom left one, for me, has often has common treasure, so be sure to smash that one because the treasure is well worth your while to snag. At long last, head to the top right, following the carpet to reach the guard captain's quarters. Inside, speak with the scruffy man who has replaced Alfonso as the guard captain. He thinks you're really suspicious, but he gives you a sword anyway with a twinkle in his eye. That sure doesn't seem very responsible, but okay. I also find it very odd that the guards specifically told you to get a sword when all the other people use, who use swords are like Alfonso and the guard captain. Everybody else has spears, so I guess we're better than they are. Haha. <laughs> Now before we go, he does have a little test ensuring that you understand the basics of sword combat. I think Nintendo handled this pretty well. It's short, sweet, and to the point, and you can get tips if you want by speaking with the guard captain, but that's optional. You can just kind of skip through this if you know what to do. To use the targeted attack, simply tap on an enemy, and when you're close to them, Link will stab them, but if you're far away, he'll perform the jump attack, which does additional damage, and this is probably the easiest way to kill enemies in general. A little more difficult is the side slash. Simply draw lines in front of Link from side to side to have him swipe in that direction. This is good to use when you have several enemies in front of you or something that you can't tap on very easily, so when you're fighting pesky enemies that are hard to hit, this is a good move to use. The final move you must perform is the spin attack. Simply draw circles around Link very quickly to have him spin around. This is obviously what you want to use when you're surrounded, but be warned that if you do four in a row, Link will become dizzy and will be unable to move for a few seconds. The guard captain will then congratulate you and let you keep the recruit sword. You can come back here anytime for additional training, and we'll do that later to get some prizes as well. Zelda will congratulate you and encourage you to continue on to the back door of the castle so that we can make our way to the Tower of Spirits. Before we do that, there is one more thing we can do real quick. You want to leave the castle and keep going south to return to Castle Town. In the top right corner of town, there is a shop which sells a lot of stuff and we just honestly can't afford at the moment. However, there is a shield there that may be smart to purchase before we head to the Tower with Zelda. It costs 80 rupees and if you open all of the chests and smash a few jars with me, then you should easily have enough. While holding the shield, Link will automatically defend against weaker attacks when you're not currently slashing your sword. And we have a lot of smaller enemies in the upcoming area that all have weaker attacks. The shield will block those, so that's very handy to have. With that, you want to re-enter the castle and go up through the throne room, and then enter the door on the left. Take the stairs down and speak with the guy at the back door. And I find it kind of strange that there isn't a gate back here or anything, or even a door itself. It's more like just a huge doorway, really. Kind of strange. Doesn't seem very well defended as the rest of the castle is, but I suppose back behind the castle is kind of enclosed back there anyway, so it's not like anybody's going to get in, but whatever, there are monsters back there. Time to put your sword training to use. As soon as you emerge, you'll encounter a new enemy called a yellow spinet. A single jump attack or spin attack will kill them instantly, while your other attacks will take two hits. Ironically, there is a guard out here who is cowering in fear in the presence of these weak enemies, and he's grateful to you in an awkward kind of way. After a little prodding, he does mention that the tunnel entrance to the Tower of Spirits is in the on that back wall somewhere to the north, uh, but it's currently closed off and he's not entirely sure where it is. Let's investigate, shall we? Now, if you were hurt by these spinets, you may want to throw these nearby rocks to get a recovery heart or two, or you can also slash the bushes around here. You can slash grass now, or if you have a sword, you can use regular sideways slashes, those work well, or spin attacks in particular. Those are the best ways to do that. 
Now head to the north and kill the spinets along the way, and up ahead you will find your first bomb flower. Be careful because they will explode if you slash them with your sword, so stay away from them when you are attacking enemies. Once you have cleared most of the enemies, you want to tap one of the bomb flowers to pick it up and then toss it at the north wall that I have marked on the map. This will reveal a cave that it was covered in the landslide, and there's also another bomb flower nearby that you can use instead, and alternatively you could have also killed the spinets by tossing bomb flowers at them, but just make sure you're far enough away so that you don't get caught in the explosion radius. Inside the cave, we have several new enemies. There are four red choo-choos that are little blob-like creatures with goofy grinning faces, and they only take one hit to defeat. And because there's four right here that all kind of surround you, a well-placed spin attack could take all four of these out at once. Keys, on the other hand, the flying bat-like enemies that fly around somewhat randomly, they're kind of common in a lot of Zelda games, and they are somewhat unpredictable because they fly around all over the place. And it makes them kind of annoying to kill without getting hit because you, you'll slash in one area and they'll kind of move over to another. At this point, side slashes or spin attacks is probably the best way to kill them. Once the enemies are taken care of, you can check out the stone tablet if you like for instructions on how to move blocks. It's pretty straightforward. You want to tap on the block to grab it, then tap and hold the arrows that appear to choose which direction you want to push or pull the, the block. Otherwise, you can just tap anywhere else on the screen to start walking away from the block. In this room, there is a floor switch that lowers the nearby wall, but only while the switch stays pressed down. The solution is obviously to push the block on top of the switch so that you can access the chest that contains a small key. Notice that the small keys will also appear on the bottom right corner of your map, so you can always tell how many you have available. Go tap on the locked door to the north and we'll move on to the second room. In this next area, we have several stone tablets that give us clues about how to solve a, the puzzle up ahead. In general, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks try to really encourage you to use your map feature to draw notes to help you solve puzzles. And in Spirit Tracks, they tried to make you use this feature a little more than you did in Phantom Hourglass. So up ahead, you want to jump across the chunks of water. To do this, you simply just run as far, fast as you can. If you run very slowly, Link will just kind of hop off the ledge and not jump far enough. Talk to all these stone tablets and write down their clues. You can do this by pressing A or down on the D-pad to toggle your map and then write down the clues they give you. After this last gap, you want to jump across and kill the red choo-choo before it heads off to the left because if it's right up against the edge, you may like jump and land like touching it and it will knock you into the water and then you'll take damage. So you may have to like either go left and wait for it to wander to the right or something. But Anyway, once you get across, you want to go ahead and destroy the blocks here. These cracked blocks can be destroyed using bomb flowers, but you'll have to use two of them to get through here. And also you want to open the chest to get a red rupee. Kill the spinets in here, and now we have a puzzle to solve. You need to activate all these switches at once, but you have to do them in the right order. So the stone tablets gave you the clues of left after bottom, bottom after top, top after right. This makes the pretty clear order of right, top, bottom, left. This will open the door. So it appears that the princess is terrified of rats. This is kind of ironic just because Zelda seems, at least to me, pretty fearless in most of the games. Um, or at least, if she is afraid, she has a very healthy fear of whatever she's afraid of. I also find it very interesting that the rats can see her even though she's a ghost. Like, so far, the only other people we know of who can see her in her ghost form are the bad guys and Link. So it's kind of interesting that the rats can see her as well. After Zelda thanks you, head north, slash the jars for some recovery hearts and possibly a common treasure, then head up the stairs and finally enter the Tower of Spirits, where I will meet up with you in the next video.